you for your mercy and your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we're more than conquerors. We thank you, Father, that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and never beneath the circumstances. We thank you, Father God, that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we walk in divine health and total prosperity. We say what you say about us, Father, and you said that we're blessed and highly favored of you. So we thank you for that, Father God, and we just speak blessings upon all your people this morning, Father God. Wherever they are, whatever they may be going through, they got the victory in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that storm turning around and going back out to sea. It shall not come near us. Elijah caused the heavens to be shut up. And, and he was just a man like us, Father God, just a human being like us. So we speak to Isaac and we command him to go back to the sea in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for blessing every house, every door that's open in your name today, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing the pastors and the ministers in this house, Father God. Help us to continually walk in love all the time, loving on one another, because love is indeed the answer. And for that, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory be to God. We're going to start on a new syllabus this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about fear, but not the cringing kind of fear. We're going to talk about a reverential fear of the Lord. Psalm 34, 11 says, Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So we got three lessons we're going to study in this study guide. What is the fear of the Lord? Promises for those who fear the Lord and living in the fear of the Lord. So our first lesson is what is the fear of the Lord? It is an awesome mind-boggling concept to know that we can have intimate relationship and friendship with God. Isn't that awesome? I'm talking about the God of the universe, that God. The God that created heaven and earth, that God. The same God that told the sun where to rise and told the oceans where to stop, that God. The same God that flung the stars into the galaxy and then he gave names to all of them. That God. Yeah. Glory be to God. You know it's estimated that there are as many as 200 billion galaxies in the universe. And those are just the ones that we can see. See man doesn't have a telescope big enough to see far enough into the galaxy. How great is our God? And that same God wants relationship with us. Amen. The same God that scooped up a handful of dirt and blew into it the breath of life and man became a living soul. That God wants to have intimate relationship and friendship with us. And I got wild there because every time I think about that, it's a wild moment for me. I can't say number wow. Hallelujah. Just to know a little bit about God is truly amazing. However, to be on intimate terms with him should fill your heart with joy, anticipation, and amazement. Millions of Christians know God is the creator of heaven and earth. However, having a personal relationship with him is really where the intimacy begins. Close friendship with God starts with becoming a part of his family. Are you a member of the family? Amen. Glory be to God. Because we do this by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Once we are a part of God's family, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God are able to guide us and teach us how to have a fulfilling and exciting relationship with God. See, our walk with God shouldn't be a boring, humdrum experience. We should be excited about the things of God. When we wake up in the morning, we should be in expectation of the wonderful things that God's going to do. Amen. I know for one thing, he daily load us with benefits. So when you wake up, you got a load of benefits already. And the Bible tells me that his mercies are brand new every morning. So if I messed up yesterday, I got brand new mercy today. Amen. See, a lot of people don't know the difference between grace and mercy. Grace is undeserved, unmerited favor. Grace is God giving us things that we don't even deserve. But mercy, mercy is not getting what we do deserve. 
Okay, because we mess up sometimes. Amen. But we don't always get the negative effects of the messes that we make. Why? Because of God's mercy. Brand new mercies every morning. Amen. See, when I mess up, I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. If I get mad with somebody and tell them off, I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm still more than a conqueror. Amen. That's mercy. See, the Bible tells me that where sin abounds, grace what? Much more abounds. That means grace super abounded over the sin. That means I cannot sin God's grace. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit teaches us through the word the fear of the Lord. There are so many promises in God's word for those who fear and respect the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? We need to understand what the fear of the Lord is in order to understand what it is not. The fear of the Lord doesn't mean that you are to be afraid of God. Why should you be afraid of the one that created you to be an intimate friend with him? He created us to love on us. He wanted a family. Amen? Amen. Never ever lose sight of this fact. God loves you with an everlasting love. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what you did yesterday, amen, or today even. God loves you with an everlasting love. And ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't separate yourself from the love of God. In his word, God has clearly defined the fear of the Lord and what it means to walk in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. The amplified version, the reverent fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way and perverted and twisted speech I hate. The New Living Translation says all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore I hate pride and arrogance corruption and perverse speech amen? amen you know before I got saved I used to use every swear word in the book matter of fact I could use some cuss words that wasn't in the book but now I hate that kind of stuff why because God is in me amen he's giving he's just cleaning me up amen but he ain't through with me yet he ain't through with none of us yet amen but I tell you I ain't what I used to be and it's all due to the glory and the mercy and the favor of God. Now the word arrogance means an offensive display of one's self-importance. It means to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. An arrogant person may think that the whole world revolves around them. Their ego says it's all about me. But y'all know what the acronym for ego is. Edging God out. When your ego gets bigger, you are edging God out of the picture. Amen? That's a dangerous place to be. An arrogant person is prideful and overbearing and is usually a know-it-all. They are not teachable because they are so full of themselves. From these verses, we can clearly see that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The more a person fears and respects God, the more they will hate evil. This means that we have to have God's attitude towards sin. The more we study and understand the holiness of God, the more we will understand the extent of his hatred of sin. God has zero tolerance for sin. Amen? He loves the sinner. Now, never lose sight of the fact that he loves the sinner, but he hates sin. And why is that? Because sin goes against his very nature. Our God is a holy God. Amen. He said in Leviticus 19 and 2, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, is holy. God will not compromise with sin, neither should you or I. Proverbs 3 and 7 says, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. When you have a reverential fear for the word of God, you will not continually practice a lifestyle of sin. Amen? 
Always know that because God is a just God, he would never tell us to do something without giving us the power and the ability to do it. See, God's grace is the power of the gospel. Grace isn't just unmerited favor. Grace is power. <laughs> Glory be to God. <clears throat> Jesus has already dealt with sin. Jesus Christ lives on the inside of Christians, and whether we are living holy or not, Jesus is still holy. You know, even if you're not living holy, the Holy One lives in you. So what happens is when we walk in obedience to what he tells us to do, his holiness will start to manifest through us. Amen. See, when people see us, they shouldn't be seeing something rude and unmannerly and ungodly. They should, should see Jesus in us. Amen. Glory be to God. <coughs> His holiness manifests in us because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So when we yield to God, when we yield to him, we die to our old self and we become more like him. Amen. I'm so glad that we become more like him. I don't know quite how it goes, but it's, it's talking about when a, uh, uh, they're uh, making silver and gold and they keep dipping it into the fire and then it begins to cleanse all the impurities off of it and they said well when do you know that it's ready it's when they can see their face or their reflection in the gold see see sometimes we may have to go through a little fire it ain't god doing it is the is the god of this world and, and because we live in a sin cursed world we go through some things but you know what each time we have victory over that we begin to look more and more like him amen and that's our destination. That's what we are headed towards, being more and more like him. Galatians 2.20 in the New Living Translation says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us <clears throat> that's an amen moment that's a glory hallelujah moment amen <clears throat> it's the power of the precious holy spirit and he gives us the power to live victorious lives we die to self as we live for jesus sin no longer has dominion over us before we got saved, we were like puppets on a string. The devil could do anything with us that he wanted to, and we had to yield to it because we had that sin nature. But we've been born again. We got the nature of Christ, amen? And as he is, so are we in this world, amen? Sin no longer has dominion over us. The devil can't make us do anything. So the first thing we must understand is the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Another definition of the fear of the Lord is found in Malachi 2 and 5. The New King James Version says, My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. Another version says, He stood in awe of my name. See, there's just something about the name of Jesus. Amen? And they're trying to take God out of everything. You know that? They're trying to, well, they took him out of the schools, and once they took God, uh, God out of the school, they had to bring in metal detectives because now the kids bringing guns to school and drugs to schools, and you got bullies and gangs that are running the school. Amen? There's no God in there. They took, take him out. They want to take him out of the Pledge of Allegiance, how we used to say one nation under God. This nation will always be a nation under God. Amen? They want to take him off of our money. They want to take in God. We trust off the money. That's why the money ain't worth nothing now. Amen? Better keep God in it. It's just something about the name of God. Now, in this verse we just read in Malachi, God is talking about his covenant with the Levites. They were God's ministers, and they turned many people from sin because they had a reverential fear of the name of God. They stood in awe of his name. Why is standing in awe of his name part of the fear of the Lord? 
God has many names that describe his character and his attributes. But I think the most powerful description of him can be found in these two words. I am. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. These two words mean God is everything that's good and perfect and excellent. And nobody else can make that claim. God is God all by himself and there is none just like him. Amen. Deuteronomy 4.35 says, The Lord himself is God. There is none other besides him. And if you need to hear from the New Testament, Mark 12.32 says, You have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but him. Glory be to God. Now I hear they have a millions of gods in the India, but there's only one. Only one true God. Glory be to God. And that's our God. That's Jehovah. <laughs> a lot of people may think that they are all that. But God is the only one who truly is all that. He is the great I am. He is everything that we need to walk in victory. We stand in awe of him because his grace is totally sufficient for us. He is now and has always been and will continue to be so perfect that the best way to describe him is to say, I am. <laughs> when we fear the Lord, we recognize that he is our light and our salvation. He is our strength, our shield, our refuge, and our fortress. He is our hiding place. Amen. We can always go to God in prayer. Amen. We don't have to take a number when we go to the Father. We don't have to wait in line when we go to God. You won't get an answering machine when you call on him. Amen. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I found out that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. He is the great I am. Whatever we need, he says, I am that I am. If you need healing, I am Jehovah Rapha, a Rofika, your healer. If you need provision, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. If you need peace, I am Jehovah Shalom, your peace. If you need me to be close to you, I am Jehovah uh, uh, Shema, your omnipresent God. Amen. I am Jehovah Rohe, your shepherd. Glory be to God. I am that I am. I am Elohim and El Shaddai. Whatever you need, God says, I am that I am. So we stand in awe of his name because there is none other besides him. There's a song that we sing here in the church. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. All you got to do is look around at creation. It's truly awesome. Amen. I marvel just driving here on Sundays at the different uh, variety of trees I see. I must see 50 to 100 different kind of trees. Our God is so awesome. We are talking about what is the fear of the Lord. And we're on page 5 of our syllabus. Psalm 33, 8 and 9. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The New Living Translation says, Let the whole world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. See, God's words are powerful. And when we speak God's words, they are powerful. Amen. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. We'll have what we say. We should stop and consider with awe and wonder the limitless power of God. You know, it, it's little things that, that uh, amaze me. Now, we all got two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and we all look different. <laughs> you know, God is just awesome, isn't he? We, we got the same thing on our face. We ought to all look alike. <laughs> but our God is so awesome. He is a supreme authority who by his words alone spoke the universe into existence. God said, let there be light and light was. How great thy art. 
Hebrews 1 and 3 says, He upholds all things by the power of his word. The Amplifier says, He upholds, maintains, guides, and propels the universe by his mighty word of power. See, God not only created the universe by his powerful word, but he maintains and directs it by his word. That's why God can't lie. Amen. Because if he told one lie, this universe would just blow up, explode, be nothing. It's held together by the integrity of his word. Right. Amen. Amen. The laws of nature are God's laws and they operate at his command. How great is our God? How awesome is our God? The same power that created the universe is the same power that cleanses us of our sins. No sin is too big for God to forgive. Amen. When we come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. Say this after me. Say, I am forgiven, I am forgiven. of all my sin. Of all my sin. Past, Past, present, present and, future. and future. The blood of Jesus blood has of Jesus. cleansed me yes. and made me whole. Glory be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Don't allow nobody to put you under condemnation. Amen. There is no condemnation in those that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Amen. For the believer, the fear of the Lord will do these two things. Number one, the fear of the Lord will produce in us the same attitude towards sin that God has, which is to hate sin and evil. Number two, the fear of the Lord will give us a deep respect for the holiness and the power of God in his name. The fear of the Lord is directly connected to obedience. In Genesis, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. But just when Abraham was about to kill his son, the angel of the Lord said to him, Now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham was willing to obey God even to killing his own son. This showed that he had a reverential fear of God. Have you ever heard some, someone say God told them to do something but they didn't do it? This attitude shows a lack of, of the fear of the Lord. When we don't obey God, it indicates that we don't fear him. We are demonstrating a lack of reverential respect for him. Been there, did that. Amen. But we're getting better and better every day, aren't we? We're going from glory to glory. Jonah 1 and 9. In this verse, the people on the ship were asking Jonah who he was and where he was from. Verse 9 said, And Jonah said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. The Amplifier says, and he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I reverently fear and worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. How many of you know that Jonah wasn't being truthful when he said he feared the Lord? His lack of fear of the Lord was evident by his disobedience. He didn't do what God told him to do. God told him to go one way, and he went another way. Jonah clearly disobeyed God, and yet he said he feared the Lord. Jonah was deceiving himself. We deceive ourselves also when we don't do what God tells us to do in his word. His Bible is our guide for living a godly life. Amen? The acronym for the word Bible is Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. We have God's instructions on everything we need to walk in victory, to live an abundant, victorious, and prosperous life. Amen? Amen? God speaks to us through his word, through the Holy Spirit, and through his men and women of God. We have the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, and yet we don't always do what God tells us to do. We are deceiving ourselves just like Jonah did, so don't point your fingers at Jonah. Sometimes we are quick to point fingers at others, but we need to examine ourselves. Before you try to take the toothpick out of your neighbor's eye, you need to take the telephone pole out of yours. <laughs> Amen. You need to sweep around your own front door before you try to come and sweep around somebody else's. And there's another saying that people that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Why? Because everybody can see what you're doing. Amen. So we got to live right. 
First John 2, 3 and 4 in the New King James Version says, And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Now God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but he disobeyed God and went in another direction, yet he said he feared the Lord. The fear of the Lord is directly connected to obeying what God tells us to do. Jonah had to learn the hard way that disobeying God has negative consequences. He indeed learned a whale of a lesson. <laughs> However, Jonah repented in the belly of the fish and God delivered him. After this experience, Jonah showed that he really feared the Lord. How? By doing what God told him to do. He could have saved himself a lot of trouble by simply obeying God from the beginning and this would have demonstrated that he really and truly feared the Lord. We have all had some negative circumstances in our life because we didn't do things God's way. And we need to remember that God's way is perfect. And when we do things his way, he makes our way perfect. Amen? When we respect and obey him, we can walk in victory and have the abundant life that Jesus came and died for us to have. God has good plans and purposes for our life. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God has wonderful plans for us, but we have to obey him and we have to do things his way. The New Living uh, uh, Version says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. And I like this verse especially because this verse is for the people that say God put sickness on them. This verse is, is for the people that say God is, is the, behind the storms and stuff. God said, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So when bad things happen, we need to give the credit to the one it belongs to, the devil. Amen. Give him his due and stop blaming God for what the devil is doing. The more we learn of God's love, his faithfulness, and his mercy, the easier it will be for us to obey him. We demonstrate the fear of the Lord in our life by our instant and constant obedience to God and his word. Anything else is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. For instance, God tells you to do something, but you murmur and complain about it, or you do it when you feel like doing it. That's delayed obedience and it's still disobedience. Or God may tell you to give someone $100, but you figure that's a little bit too much money. So instead you give them $20. That's partial obedience and partial obedience is still disobedience. When you truly fear the Lord, you will obey him. Amen? God will tell us to do things with, without telling us why we are to do them. We don't need to know why. We just need to trust God. We just need to rely on him and have confidence in him. We just need to know that God is speaking to us and we should obey him. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Now we're going to pick up the rest of this lesson um, uh, next week uh, talking about the fear of the Lord. Uh, having a reverential respect for him, whatever God says in his word to do it. I remember the first miracle that Jesus did was at the wedding in Cana, and Jesus wasn't ready to start his ministry yet, but his mom kind of put him on the spot because she said, whatever he say, do, do it. Amen. Whatever the word of God tells us to do, we have to just do it. Amen. Glory be to God. Give God some praise because he's worthy to be praised. There's none like Jehovah. Amen. Glory be to God.